Many animals, and even some plants, use camouflage to hide themselves from the eyes of predators and prey. And camouflage has long provided some of the most wonderful examples of evolution and adaptation. And it can work in a wide variety of ways. It could involve resembling the general appearance of the environment where an animal lives, or looking like a particular object in the habitat that a predator would normally ignore. And it's not difficult to understand the basic idea of camouflage. For example, the way that a nightjar might use its plumage patterns to hide its nest from the eyes of hungry predators. So while the basic idea of camouflage might seem intuitive, there are actually many different types of concealment that exist in nature. So how does camouflage vary across animals in the natural world? And how does it actually work? Probably the most widespread type of camouflage is something called background matching. And that's where an animal resembles the general colour, pattern and brightness of the environment or the visual background where it tends to be found. For example, this juvenile ghost crab from Borneo is a near perfect match to the appearance of the sand on the beach where it tends to live. As many of the early Victorian naturalists and explorers like Alfred Russell Wallace discussed, background matching could either involve looking very specifically like one or two backgrounds where an animal spends most of its life, or it could occur in a way where an animal matches lots and lots of different backgrounds, but none of them perfectly, some kind of a compromise in camouflage form, which is not a perfect match to any environment, but enables them to match many different places to a certain degree. Regardless of how it's optimised, background matching is often extremely effective. For example, the way that this might look just like a tree trunk with nothing on it, but as you get closer and closer, you see that there's actually a moth, which is a perfect resemblance to the colour and the pattern of the bark on which it's sitting. And it works by preventing detection. So a hungry bird foraging through a woodland might look at a tree trunk but fail to detect or notice that there's actually any moth or prey item on the tree at all. The problem with background matching is that it still leaves the outline of the body visible. So the salient edges of the body and its shape still can give away the presence of an animal, even if it's a really effective match to the background environment. So around the early 1900s, an artist called Abbot Thayer came up with a wide variety of theories related to how camouflage might work. And one of these was called disruptive or ruptive coloration. And this was an idea that was then formalized a few decades later by a zoologist called Hugh Cott. And the basic idea with disruptive camouflage is that strong contrasting patches of color are placed near the edges of an animal's body and they serve to break up the appearance of shape and destroy the perception of its outline and its edges. And in turn, other markings are placed on the inside of the body form to create the appearance of false edges and shapes corresponding to features that don't really exist. And a range of work, of modern scientific work, has shown that disruptive camouflage is an extremely effective way of preventing an object from being detected. However, at this point in time, very little work has been done to investigate disruptive camouflage in real animals. The other problem that many animals face is that their three-dimensional shape often creates shadows on the underside of their body. For example, light intensity coming from above will often illuminate the top surface of their body and cast a shadow underneath, and that can serve to highlight their three-dimensional form and make them easier to detect. So again, Abbot Thayer, along with another zoologist called Edward Poulton, came up with an idea, a concept called countershading. And countershading is a phenomenon that's very common in nature, whereby animals have body surfaces which are darker on the surface which is facing higher light intensity and lighter 
on the surfaces of their body that are tended to be shadowed by their three-dimensional form. And this process of countershading can serve to eliminate shadows and destroy the appearance of their 3D form, making them harder to detect. And again, modern scientific work shows that this is an effective way of enhancing the concealment of animals against predator detection. Tricks like disruption and countershading are really effective ways at hiding objects and animals in a variety of environmental conditions. However, some of the most impressive examples of camouflage in nature come from something called masquerade. And here, an animal takes on the appearance of another object in the environment that a predator would normally ignore. For example, a dead leaf or a bird dropping. And masquerade works not by preventing detection, but by preventing recognition. Because a hungry predator might see an object like a caterpillar, but mistake it for a bird dropping instead of an actual prey item. These examples of concealment are truly impressive, but many animals in nature can do something else as well. They can actually change their appearance to resemble the colours and the patterns of the environment or the background where they're living. The masters of colour change for camouflage are cephalopods like cuttlefish. Within a few seconds, cuttlefish can change the way that they look to take on the colours and the patterns of the particular place where they happen to be sitting, or even resemble the objects in the environment that are around them, like a rock or some seaweed. Most animals, though, actually change colour over slightly longer time periods, like hours or days, or through even longer changes that might occur through development over weeks and months. Many crabs and prawns, for example, change colour depending upon the environment in which they live or to match particular objects in their environment or backgrounds in their environment like red or green seaweed. Often the key to colour change lies in the presence of things like chromatophore cells. And these cells act like little packages containing different types of coloured pigment, like these ones on a shore crab here. And by changing the number and the type of chromatophore cells and how pigment is dispersed within them, animals can change the way that they appear over a variety of timescales. One of the fascinating things about many camouflaged animals is that one individual can often look completely different from another individual of the same species. That is, they are polymorphic. And the reasons for polymorphism are not always clear, but there are a variety of different explanations. And polymorphism can have either a genetic component, for example, many mice or reptiles look different depending upon the action of certain genes, or it can involve things like colour change and development. For example, these crabs here are all individuals of the same species of shore crab found on just one beach and they can change colour and pattern as they develop. One of the advantages of polymorphism is that it might enable individuals to match different habitats where they might potentially live, or it might enable them to match features of the same environment of different visual appearance, for example, different coloured rocks or stones or seaweed, for example. Another reason why polymorphism might exist is that it could potentially provide an advantage against the way that some predators hunt. For example, when a predator encounters several prey items of a similar type, let's say a brown moth, it then forms something called a search image, meaning that it's more likely to search for brown moths in the future. As a consequence though, the predator might become worse and overlook other forms like grey moths. So there's an advantage to animals that might look different from other individuals in the population. And over time, this can lead to the evolution of polymorphism in prey species. It's not enough to simply look like the background or the environment where you live. You have to also sit in locations where your camouflage is effective. For example, 
A brown caterpillar that would normally be well hidden against the branches on a tree would stand out like a sore thumb if it started to come to rest on the surface of a green leaf. And so many animals, for example some moths, have the ability to select where they come to rest and where they sit in a way that enhances their camouflage. And this occurs in a variety of different species. Sometimes these behavioural choices can be very specific and tuned towards the coloration that an individual animal has. For example, it's been shown recently that some nesting birds like quail will choose particular colours of background in order to lay their eggs that provide the most effective camouflage for their own individual egg colours, because the colours of eggs vary from one female to another. And this is something that some lizards seem to do as well. So certain lizards with a particular colour type will choose to sit on rocks that enhances their own unique individual colour form. So behavioural choice is a really powerful way of ensuring that an animal can maximise the effectiveness of its camouflage and make sure that it stays hidden as effectively as possible. Finally, some animals combine both changes in appearance with behavioural strategies to achieve different types of concealment. For instance, some animals are decorators. They take objects from the environment and attach them to their bodies to change the way that they look. These here are long-legged spider crabs and they detach pieces of seaweed and then attach them to their body with specially modified hook-like structures in order to look just like a piece of floating seaweed and they're almost impossible to see without looking really really carefully. Camouflage is then something which at first glance seems to be very simple and intuitive, but as we delve deeper we see that there's a rich complexity about how it works and the different types of camouflage that exist. There's huge variation in how camouflage works and evolves in nature, and a variety of processes involved from genetic and developmental changes through to different types of strategies and behavioural adaptations to make camouflage work for animals in the wild.